Physicist Richard Feynman once declared that the most important thing to know about our universe is that it's made of atoms. He's wrong by half. The most important, most illuminating thing to know about our reality is this. The structure and flow of our universe is governed by two very different sorts of dynamics, two sorts of physical activity. The dynamics of aimlessness and the dynamics of purpose. Some physical activity has no aim, no goal. We call this physics. Some activity has a destination, a target, an objective. We call this purpose. Or more simply, physics ensues and purpose pursues. Together, these two fundamental dynamics create a cosmic cycle that gives form to our reality. Physics shapes purpose, and purpose shapes physics. One revelation that falls out of this insight is the nature of time. Time itself, that great deceiver, becomes clear when we understand the cosmic cycle. Time does not emerge from quantum foam and superstring. Time emerges from the interplay of matter and mind. Yes! Uh, that's how you do it. That is how you do it. Amazing. My goodness, that was, uh, yeah. that was a work of poetry in addition to uh, theorization. <laughs> Wow. All right, Ogi. Physics versus... Purpose. Yeah, purpose. What, what, what was the assignment? Well, it's, not ver it's, it's not versus. It's a, mm. it's a dance. It's an interchange. It's an interplay. Yes. So, okay, so the, is there a transition from physics to purpose? Yeah, so here's one of the key concepts of this. We all know the equations for physics, and the equations for physics... Time does not matter. Time, if you just look at the equations for quantum physics and such, time does not go in any particular direction, and there's no natural reason to expect it to flow. But the equations for mind, for purpose, for thought, time must go forward in one direction. And here's the more interesting part. The equations for purpose, for thinking, for consciousness, it, they are substrate independent. They, do, they are not rooted in the equations of physics, all they require is that there is a pool of randomness that can't be tainted by other minds and a predictability to the randomness, which is exactly what we get from quantum physics. So there's a structure to the dynamics of purpose. It's kind of like a ladder. It's kind of like a ladder that turns into a cycle. And so as purpose goes up this ladder at the highest level, the highest kinds of purpose, the highest kinds of minds are operating in such a way that they can influence the equations of physics, the variables and parameters of physics. So mm -hmm. that's the nature of this cosmic cycle. And so matter and physics are constantly giving rise to new forms of purpose, like it evolved on Earth. And as purpose rises up this ladder, eventually it gets to the point where it can start to influence the parameters of nature. Interesting. Mm -hmm. So at the top, it feeds back. At the top, our minds so powerful and galactic, so to speak, that they have the ability. But there's multiple minds, and they're competing. So the whole system is designed in all kinds of ways to prevent the formation of a god, of a single, all-powerful, all-knowing being. Uh, all these sorts of things like Heisenberg uncertainty principle, uh, Gödel's incompleteness theorem, Church and Turing's theorems about uh, stopping uh, computation, all of these are related to the relationship between matter and mind. So, oh, go ahead. Man, I, I love the idea yeah. that only half half of the story is physics. I, I've been beating on this drum for a long time. I find it very strange that the cosmologists are physicists as opposed to metaphysicists. It seems like a very arbitrary delineation. That seems right on, on point for me. It's a 400-year-old problem. What happened, there was a great schism in science uh, shortly after Newton and, and science became... Uh, its own tradition, its own well, its own tribe. To be to be completely honest, the first scientists were all natural philosophers. They did mind and matter, psychology and physics. But eventually, they realized physics was a whole lot easier, and the mind was impossible. So they just started doing the easy stuff. Physics is easy because it's aimless. the the math The math is not that hard. You can teach a twelve year old most of the basic math for classical physics, and they can even get a basic understanding of quantum physics. No 12-year-old can understand 
the mathematics for consciousness and these sorts of things. The, it's a whole order of magnitude of greater complexity. The math is far, far harder. And we're only in the past 25, 30 years starting to understand that math. So this is the first time we can start to connect all of this math of purpose with this long-standing <laughs> math of physics. And what you see is purpose is its own independent thing. It's not rooted in the particular variables or the particular nature of quantum physics or relativity <laughs> for that matter. And so once you realize that, you realize, wow, purpose is, sh purpose is shaping matter itself. The key thought experiment to ponder that reveals this, if you think it through, is Maxwell's game, and what more commonly known as Maxwell's demon, the idea that you can take a box, say, of room temperature oxygen, and using your mind, a demon, extract the hot gas from it. This is an old, old puzzle. James Maxwell proposed it in 1867. And personally, I think physics botched it. They, they crapped the bed on this thought experiment. They think they've nailed it. No, they didn't figure it out. They're viewing it as a puzzle of thermodynamics, information theory, and one other thing, too. But, okay, uh, I want to I wanna give a chance to... Well, first of all, Doug, what do you think about all this? Well, I love it. I, I, I think it's awesome that you found this nice cleavage, but immediately I started trying to find exceptions to your um, cleavage, and one is meditation, where the goal is to sort of lose your purpose as a thinker right so the conscious mind you're you're trying to turn it off and be physics i guess right i don't know you're just trying to be an observer and not have purpose in the state of meditation so that's a weird little uh maybe that's on the line between the two but you got me thinking there second thought was how do you separate physics from the thinker and is it possible that you know things that we perceive as physics are actually uh conscious and are just moving in or pursuing things in a very slow methodical way that we perceive as being physics but the you know like gravity it's 9.81 meters per second squared. Well, maybe that's the conscious object or whatever that's creating gravity um, with purpose is slowly changing that formula. And it's just changing so slowly that we can't perceive it changing in our snapshot of time that we are conscious in this universe. So that was just some stuff that came to my mind. I don't know if that's uh, relevant at all. Well, but. Let, let me tackle your very, the very first question sure. you said, which is how can you tell the boundary yeah. between the physics and, and the purpose? Yeah. And that's by looking at the activity itself, the physical activity, the dynamics. If the dynamic is aimed towards a goal, it's purpose. If it's aimless, if it doesn't matter if it goes forward or backward in time, then it's physics. So you look at the actual, what the change, the activity, the dynamic, not not the structure or not the experience, but what's happening underneath the physical activity. So the purpose is to not have purpose? Well, it's more that <laughs> physical activity that's trying to do something, that's trying to get somewhere, that's trying to change reality in a particular way. Physics doesn't try to change reality in any particular way. It just follows the rules. Mm -hmm. But with purpose, you might want to change the rules or bend the rules and just like we want to always find ways to bend and change the rules, so do the minds up above us, too. I'm, <laughs> They're after uh, that, too. I'm relieved to know who to call when I wake up and the rules of physics have changed one morning. Because <laughs> Ogie seems to have a handle on what's, <laughs> on, on what's coming down the pipes. But Ogie, yes. we got we to gotta roll. We have, uh, cool. we have a whole hat full of people. Can I ask one question, um, um, Nasha, for Ogie? Yeah, of course. So, Ogie, yeah. what... what how do you see this uh, theory uh, benefit society? What What do you think are some practical uh, uses of the, of your theory? Number one, I think physics has got a stranglehold on people's notions of what's possible in the universe. They promote this idea that the universe is going to end in heat death, you know, just ultimate boredom. And that's just completely phony and false. It just mm -hmm. takes 
humans and purpose and minds and consciousness and love and it takes it all away and yeah. gives it no role. You know, it, 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 physics has always assigned these sorts of things, sex and love and, and romance as you know, <laughs> derivative of these fundamental things that the fundamental part is the quantum physics. And I say, no, purpose is absolutely as fundamental as quantum physics. Awesome, I awesome, that. I like that. And uh, I would agree with you.